Greetings all. Last Outrider here with a topical question. Is 40K racist? Interestingly, this is a very old question. And the answer to it is not more than industry standard. A more interesting or topical question would be, is Games Workshop racist? And again, I would say, not more than the UK standard. Um, which then leads to the question more in depth, are Space Marines racist? Hmm, this one gets a little more questionable because it deals with the lore behind how Space Marines are created, right? And the Primarchs. But if you go back to Rogue Trader, um, the Primarchs were not introduced until 3rd edition. That's correct. In Rogue Trader, Space Marines did not have Primarchs. Now, in Rogue Trader, you have 20 individuals, 18 of which we know. Games Workshop needed to make the creative decision of deciding who these 20 individuals were and the backgrounds of them. They could have been anything. Uh, when they were first introduced, we have no idea who they were. They were unknown, legendary, mythical figures, which have since been developed. Their backgrounds could have been anything. And yet they chose most distinctly uh, European-based individuals. Vulcan being an exception, not because of ethnicity, but just because he's weird. Um, what about the Emperor? Well, the Emperor, since the time they started describing him, has always been Sumerian which would mean he would be, you know, Middle Eastern, North African uh, ethnicity in appearance. Which would make you wonder then why would all of the Primarchs be European, but uh, let's not go there. The question with the Space Marines then became is that since they all come from genetically related to their Primarchs, and then they would genetically share the traits of their Primarchs, uh, you would then say the act of turning someone into a Space Marine would make them look like their Primarch, and this is what their Primarch looked like, so therefore, they all tended to, to, to be, I will just say, not diverse. Now, the question then becomes, is that as we went further into the Space Marine stories and legions, there tended to be this tradition of rewarding Space Marines that looked more like their Primarch than Space Marines that didn't. Almost every chapter uh, had this tradition. Um, most notably, you can see this in the, you know, Sons of Horus, uh, Little Horus, Oxymon Horus, and things like that. Uh, the more you looked like your, pri your Primarch, the more favored status you got, which then it can be concluded that the less you looked like your Primarch, the less favored you would be in a Legion. And that, of course, uh, would be inherently discriminatory based upon uh, 
physical characteristics of being different from your Primark, which would mean that, yes, you could assume that most legions practiced some form of discrimination based upon appearance. Based upon the novel's characterizations of life in a legion. That is that. Um, the question now is, is, can you change this? Now, the thing that I found most interesting about this, and this is just me personally, is that if you've watched any of my other videos, you will know that 40K borrowed very, very heavily from Frank Herbert's Dune. And Dune is most definitely one of the most multicultural universes in science fiction. Like I said in my first answer, is is 40K uh, racist? And I say not more than industry standard. By that I mean as an industry, sci-fi is not that diverse. Um, fantasy fiction, even less so. Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's works are very uh, noted for being rather monochromatic in his universe creating, even language creation, um, and that being the source material for virtually every fantasy-based story and genre and game therefore has a halo effect, making fantasy fiction pretty much uh, monocultural as well. So, with Games Workshop picking up on so many different aspects of Dune series, how did they manage to skip over this major point when creating the 40k universe and stories. You read the histories of the Dune universe and Herbert goes out of his way just to make a melange of religions and cultures. Zin Sunni is one of the major religions. Think about the mix there. The orange Bible and the mix. Ah, oh, it's just... Uh, and of course, look at Arrakis. Arrakis is obviously um, Middle Eastern, North African-based cultures, communities, peoples, languages, um, very clearly. Uh, Chani and everything, which would mean, by definition, and we really don't know as much about um, the, the, the Lanstrad and the houses, but we can assume that with the vast mixing of cultures that they had and all the other histories of Dune, that they would be equally mixed then in the Lanstrad, despite how they appeared in the movie. Um, definitely, Dune is multicultural. That somehow didn't make it into uh, the 40K storytelling as much as every other aspect of it. So how did that happen? I don't know. I just notice it. So the real question I would guess is... All GW would need to do to address that would be to change up the Primarchs a bit. I mean, we've already seen that they're starting to do that. We can see the the ninth edition Astartes and um, and uh, uh, the the greater role of the Sororitas is definitely a main feature of the new storylines to come. Now, more than racist, I would say, is, is 40K sexist? 
Uh, <sighs> the Adept of Sororitas, aka Sisters of Battles, is most definitely treated differently than any other army list in 40k and there could be a number of reasons for this um i'm going to set aside mike you know ward's depiction of them in his codexes and he has women issues which i'm not going to touch upon uh but the Adeptus Sororitas Sisters of Battle are unique amongst the army list in that it was a player-created army list. It wasn't created by a development team at Games Workshop. It was created by players. Players were consulted and wrote all of the original rules for them. So it was kind of an army list that was born from a committee. As such, it was very difficult to adjust and tweak them very quickly as you could with new codexes with all of the other army lists, um, making them almost always the last codex in I, how many editions? I think four editions in a row after third edition. The, the last codex before the new edition of 40 came came out would be Sisters of Battle, which would mean you had about a good six months of playing them before the new edition of the game came out, and then you'd have to wait again for the last codex to be Sisters of Battle. Fun. Or uh, the Ministorum, or the Ecclesiarchy, or the, the whatever. So... I'm simply going to say not more than industry standard, and the industry is changing, and therefore GW is changing, and therefore Games Workshop uh, will change 40K and Age of Sigmar to be on par with the industry multicultural slash racial slash whatever uh, standard. I mean, next you're going to just say, hey, where, where is the LBGQTIA groups of 40K? Well, yeah, I guess they can always just point to Slanesh and say, ah, oh, look over there, see? <laughs> they're, they're doing anything they want. Um, if you want to relegate them to being purely part of chaos. But uh, that would be my answer to that. And I will leave it up to the viewers to determine whether there is or in it isn't as a definitive answer to 40K. That's my quick video on this subject. Enjoy and... Bye. <laughs>